Yeah, I stumbled across this article from yesterday or something. Climate change is intensifying Earth's water cycle at twice the predicted rate. Research shows. Rising temperatures pushing more fresh water towards poles than climate models previously estimated. Rising global temperatures have shifted at least twice the amount of fresh water from warm regions towards the Earth's poles than previously thought, as the water cycle intensifies according, according to new analysis. Climate change has intensified the global water cycle by up to 7.4% compared with previous modeling estimates of 2 to 4%. Research published in the Nature just suggests. The water cycle describes the movement of water on Earth. It evaporates, rises into the atmosphere, cools and condenses into rain or snow and falls again to the surface. When we learn about the water cycle, traditionally we think of it as some unchanging process which is constantly constantly filling and refilling our dams or lakes and our water sources. The studies did offer. Dr. Taimur Sohail of the University of New South Wales said, We think of it as some unchanging process. But scientists have long known that rising global temperatures are intensifying the global water cycle, while dry subtropical regions are likely to get drier as fresh water moves towards wet regions. Last August, the Intergovernmental Panel of Climate Change 6th Assessment Report included that climate change will cause long-term changes to the water cycle, resulting in stronger and more frequent droughts and extreme rainfall events. Sohar said the volume of extra fresh water that had already been pushed to the poles as a result of an intensifying water cycle was far greater than previous climate models suggest. So they are wrong totally. Those dire predictions that were laid out in the IPCC will potentially be even more intense, he said. The scientists estimated the volume, that the volume of extra fresh water that shifted from warmer regions between 1970 and 2014 is between 46 and 77,000 cubic kilometers. We are seeing higher water cycle intensification that we are expecting. That means we need to move even more quickly towards the path of CO2 emissions. Yeah, put off all the volcanoes first. <laughs> <coughs> the team used ocean salinity as a proxy for rainfall in their research. The ocean is actually more salt in some places and less salt in other places, so I said. When rain falls onto the ocean, it tends to dilute the water so it becomes less saline. Where there is net evaporation, you end up salt left behind. Hmm. The researchers had to account for the fixed mixing of water due to ocean currents. We developed a new method that basically tracks how the ocean is moving around with re reference to this freshening or salinification. It's kind of like a rain gauge that is in constant motion. Dr. Richard Matear, the chief research scientist at the Cicero Climate Search Climate Science Center, who was not involved in the research, said the study suggested existing climate modeling has underestimated the potential impacts of climate change on the water cycle. There has been a dramatic uplift in our ability to monitor the ocean, he said. Observational data sets like those used in the study are really ripe for revisiting how global warming is changing the climate system and the implications it might have on important things like the hydrological cycle. Yes, I had to search for something and I came up with this one. Did you know Earth has a double electrical heartbeat? And there should be a picture. Here it is. Global electrical circuit. So now this means energy is going in and out. In and out. I said it wrong. Anyway. 
Our magnetic poles are on the move. Northern pole, let's say, moves in this way, and the southern pole, pole in this way, but not that fast as the northern, which means the lines which are connecting everything here. These ones will get much longer until they reach the other pole and the other ones will get much shorter. And those are the, the lines or spheres which keep our atmosphere in place, magnetosphere in place, heliosphere and all those spheres in place. And the spheres, they continue in the ground. So there is somewhere in the ground the sphere of water and the sphere of lava and all the other spheres there has to there are spheres also in the ground as we have up in the air in the atmosphere our atmosphere so if there is a shift going on with those spheres what we can observe like on the outside if they let's say it's that's somehow like I pen just now one of these. Let's imagine this would be L shells. And if these move to either direction, the shells within Earth, let's say this would be water, this will move as well up or down. Groundwater is either rising or lowering. And with a, with a higher energy input in Earth's electrical circuit, there will be more water, water evaporation because there is more energy. The water molecules get excited. We get plasma, which are the clouds, and they will discharge because nature is searching for the equilibrium. Yeah, I leave it here. Thanks. Bye. There would be so much still to talk about that, but. Yeah, thanks for listening. Bye.